Oh, my goodness. We have the ethnic chameleon himself tonight, Charlie Agostino. <laughs> uh, um, hey, is everybody, what are all the ethnicities that people have hit you with that they've asked you? Okay, so we got, obviously, we got Italian. Um, well, okay, the Italian one, it, it should be the immediate go-to. Yeah. But then we got uh, so any any Mediterranean we go Greek. Um, You've been hit with Greek. Yeah, we could go. We go Hispanic. We go any anything Hispanic. I- Iranian, uh, Arabic, and some of my my best friends are Arabic too. So I just kind yeah. of blend in. So I think that's that's pretty much. I mean, anything Turkish. You you called me Turkish a few times. Is that what what one does? Do any of them offend you? <laughs> no, no. I, I it's a it's a compliment. It's a compliment. That's dude, a chameleon. I like it. I, I mean, it's I, I, it's dude. There's, there's, just you're getting you. You're just like hillbilly here, right? You're, you're just, not, you're just a guy, right? You're just a, a guy, white, right? I'm just like a, a regular. Guy. I'm just like white bread, right? Like, I think this is there's a little there's a little more mystery. I think. Yeah, like, there's like you're like a variety as the spice of life type guy. Yeah, like I think it's like they walk up and they like, what is what kind of accent is this guy gonna have? What's going on here? What's this guy doing? Right, like I, I think that they're always like you're a wild, you're a bit of a wild card. Yeah, Tadaki Hada told me that people mistake him for a bunch of different ethnicities. I, I coach Hada, man. I, I work with Coach Hada quite a bit. He told me per- Peruvian is the big one. He said he gets really. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like okay. He's still, he's still rolling around scrapping like a maniac. Yeah, how about that guy can still do his age and push-ups? God bless him. I, yeah, it's awesome. I, you know, I hope that I'm still able to, like, uh, I don't know, be above ground when I'm his age. Let yeah, alone I would say just show I'd inside say, trips, right? I'd say just present is uh, is a, is a good thing. Present, not drooling, being able to use the restroom by myself, all that, right. clean myself, that type of. I'll be super excited about that. But um, so actually, what year did you graduate from St. Edward? Uh, Two thousand three. So oh three. You just missed the – well, you were on one of the greatest teams of all time. Would have been like your freshman, sophomore year, right? Correct. I remember, man, the first four-way classes were uh, Ryan Lang, four-time state champ, Mark Mose, two-time state champ, uh, Mason Leonard, three-time state champ, Mark Jane, three-time state champ. That team also had Ryan Bertin, <laughs> uh, Zach Schweda, Nick Mann, uh, Dunson, Von Druska, when I mean it was uh, one of the best. Yeah, that yeah. that team was really good. But what's wild about that team would it have been the O one team. Uh, two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah. Wildest thing about that team is you had guys like uh, Bertine was on the ninety eight team. Yeah, that's what's cr- and he was a starter. You know what I mean? Like so, it's yeah. like. A little guy, he was like, uh, I think it was the first three week. I think it was Mason Leonard was 103, Mark Jane was 112, and I think I could be wrong, but I think Ryan was 119. It's just crazy to look at it. And then obviously, you got Rovat, you got yeah. uh, uh, Gray Maynard. I think Yoshi graduated in 97. 97, he was the year before, which they had a great team yeah. that year. With like, I think he's 97, Jeremy Orski's 97. Yeah, I saw Orski uh, at the, at the football game the other day. He's freaking awesome. How Love many F bombs? A lot. We're over 100? <laughs> he's just, uh, he always, he said, like, part of the reason I love him, he, I mean, him and his brother are both wildly successful. And yeah. They, they said, and they take great pride in still just acting like a bunch of Parma hillbillies. Correct. But they're, Correct. no, they're they're great, great, great people. I mean, I they're, they've been really, really good to me. And I've just got, I got to know him, like, kind of later in life. Um, But they're both fantastic. Yeah, I mean, so Jeremy and Jason. Jeremy was at Kent State. He was my teammate. And that guy really used to kick the absolute tar out of me. Yeah. Jeremy Gorski was really good, and then he got a lot of he got concussions. Yeah, and then he had to, his career. Yeah, ended up, you know, he got medical because you know. Yeah, he got yeah. I mean, even because he wrestled what he wrestled Bob Jones both years. Yes, he was six eight three two seventy five. Wait, played Ohio State football. Right? Yeah, yeah. He played in the NFL. Played for the Giants, and then he played football at Penn State. He, he qualified for the NCAA tournament for Penn State. Yeah. Bob, Bob Jones did. He actually kicked Jeremy square in the face their senior year and knocked him out. Jeremy did not finish the match. What's that? Say that again. He had the medical forfeit, right? He no, yeah, like he did not finish the match. Yeah, and that was uh, that was at the Nutter Center, I believe, right? Yeah, Nutter right Center because uh, 
And then 98, the next year was my senior year, was the last year at the Nutter Center. In 99, it moved to uh, Schottenstein, which okay. I think it's too big. The Schottenstein is too big for it. It should be at St. John's or. I, I love the shop. I love that you finals. Love I, I just the finals. It just has like a, I mean, it's awesome. I mean, it's, I think it's something really Ohio can hang its hat on. I, even like college coaches that, you know, I, I know a lot of college coaches at this point through work and through um, just my own wrestling career, but it's, it's something I take great pride in the state of Ohio. I mean, it's just a, it really is something special. I mean, that finals experience and then everything with Rudis now, I mean, they've done a great job too supporting um, just Ohio wrestling. So it's a, uh, it's a cool thing. I, you know, you and I, we talk a lot. We text a lot we, or talk or just, we do interviews. You know, we're just, we're around each other probably five, six times a year. I always love it because you're pretty jolly. Even if you guys aren't having a good tournament, I like that you're a, a happy go lucky guy, but you just showed me a really cool piece of Italian stallion memorabilia from yeah. your, your family. Um, I know Vince Matucci is your grandfather, right? He is your Correct. maternal grandfather, right? Correct. Yeah. Can you please share what you yeah, share? So my grandfather hand? passed a couple of years ago now. Um, and, you know, we're going through all his stuff. And my cousin, Alex, uh, Alex Moore, he was the state finalist for St. Ed's uh, 2000, I want to say 12. But we got, you know, kind of the, the lion's share of the wrestling memorabilia because we were the wrestlers of the family. So I was fortunate enough to get his, this is his varsity letter from the 1951 state championship team. That was the 10 way classes, six day champs. They all grew up on the same two blocks, the old Italian neighborhood. So pretty, pretty cool piece of memorabilia, obviously very sentimental to me, but yeah, a lot of history. Is that school district John Marshall now? I honestly, I don't know. That school isn't there anymore. No, no, I understand that. Okay. Now where they live, their old neighborhoods, would they go to John Marshall? I don't think so. I'm not sure where they'd go. I don't know. What are the West Side ones? John Marshall. Ro- is Rhodes West Side? I don't know. You know I'm not good at this. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a private school snob, right? I'm I mean, spoiled. Sure. I mean, sure. like, kids, like honestly, I grew up in the, like, the area that I live in West Park is, it's real Catholic, all, you know, St. Pat, like the Nemes, right? It's West yeah. Park. But I mean, it's pretty much if you're at one of those schools, you're going to end up at Ed's Ignatius, Holy Name, like the public school route isn't just because it's, I mean, it's just it's it's a little different, obviously. Vince Matucci, your mom's dad, maternal grandfather, okay. he was a state champ. They had six of the 10 states champs, one of the greatest teams ever. Yeah, uh, I, I actually have the book, the 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 Mark Osgood book. Yeah, yeah, I, I have that chronicle in there, right? Yeah, of course. And I don't know where was their was their tournament at like Oberlin or Otterbein. Where was their state tournament? Do you remember? I'm not sure. I don't know. But I gotta the... check that because that's that's an interesting thing to know because they weren't always in St. John's. We take right. it for granted it's always been in Columbus. You know, they had the 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 debacle at Cincinnati Gardens in '91. I want to say what happened there. Center. What's that? It was a debacle. It was a horrendous, awful venue. Are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> It was like when OAC was at, they had it at the Steubenville place. That's not there anymore. Really? It was bad. And it was really bad. Yeah. And it was like the Mahoning Valley hitmen must have played there. Or something right. Like that. <laughs> and it was a, it was almost like a Schmitty deal, I want to say. And it was just, oh. it was really bad. It's not there anymore. It was St. John's Arena, too. Really? Okay. Yeah. But, um, uh, Vince Matucci was then the head rules interpreter and the head right. official for the state of Ohio for how long? I, it was a long time. It was like, four, I'm going to say like 30, 40 years. Long time. So, dude, are you like 150% uh, uh, Italian then? I told you, I, you always ask me this. I'm 50% Italian, 50% Sicilian, which is Italian. Oh, that's right. I forgot about yeah, that. There's, you got to denote the difference, right? Yes. Um. Dude, did you know my grandfather, my Papa Ferd, actually, when there were, uh, when the United States Navy was invading North Africa, he invaded North Africa, Sicily, and Italy. He was driving the amphibious vehicles. Really? Like, yeah. He's the one that's yeah. like in all your videos and stuff? Yeah. My my grandfather Ferd, yeah. Yeah. My, my kid's named after. Yeah. My brother's named after. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that guy did an amphibious landing in Sicily and Italy, and I have the uh, letters of commendation. Really? 
Yeah. So, dude, meta. it's crazy. I teach with this lady, or she's actually my boss, and she was telling a story about her families was hiding in caves when their the Americans were invading. And I was like, I pulled her aside and I said, my grandfather was on was in the amphibious invasions when your relatives were hiding in caves. Right. Dude, it blew when she told when she I like I like started sweating and I like yeah. got like the sinking feeling in my stomach. I was like, oh, and they yeah, were like, the they were, you know what I mean? They were non-combatant people. They were, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, you know, they were hiding and, you know, because it was these these enemy combatants were coming on shore. But at that point, I think the Italian army, the fascists, by the way, had cut and run. And, you know, I don't think there was a whole lot of resistance in, in that landing in right. that particular situation. But there was, you know, like the Americans were bombing them. Yeah. It's wild to think about it. But like, when she told that story and it was in front of a, a group of kids, I was like, oh, my grandfather was actually yeah, yeah. really the invader. And it was like crazy to think. And then he was there for different parts of D-Day, which is the largest amphibious yeah. uh, invasion in the history of humans. Crazy, so, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I know that's right. So 50 percent Italian, 50 percent uh, Sicilian. Which side is Italian? Which side? The so father's side is Sicily. Catolico Sicily. Okay. And there's actually, there is, I think it's in December, I think NC State and Oklahoma State is having a duel in Sicily. I think it's called Scrap in Sicily. I remember seeing it. They did it like two or three years ago, I remember. Yeah, and I think they're rebooting it this year. Yeah, because it's it's Journeyman, right? Journeyman does it? Yeah, yeah. Pope Elysio, I mean, uh, you know, go, go figure, right? <laughs> I don't know uh, Pat as well, but I've, I I got to know Frank just through work, through Journeyman. He's... uh Interesting guy. I, I freaking love him. Um, Those guys are good guys. Those guys. I remember when, when COVID was going on, I had to educate myself on just like disinfectants and all that stuff because we were selling the tablets and all that. It was just a weird time. I remember he called me and he, he was like, hey, so what's going to happen? I'm going to fly you out. We're going to have a camp here. You're going to be my you're going to be my COVID uh, specialist. And you're going to talk. I'm like, I'm a wrestling coach and I sell soap. I'm not going to be your COVID specialist. <laughs> He's, he's going to tell everyone I was a scientist and knew about this. I was like, no, Frank, I'm not doing this. I love it. I love that they were just going to straight up game the system with you. He's a, he's, I was, Frank is a resourceful guy. Yeah, definitely. And he, you know, he's big into these trips. They do a really good job at their tournaments and their club. And yeah, those guys just, I, I like them. I like them. Yeah, and I like he them. cares a ton. He cares a yes. ton. Yeah. And they both, they both come in the front door. They're both coming in and telling oh, yeah. them going on it's not like this mystery or something you know what no, i mean no uh yeah. you know when we talk a lot you know like you have a lot of pride obviously being italian and sicilian yeah. but like your grandpa man i remember you were like oh you gotta talk to your grandpa and the biggest thing i hate is i hate missed opportunities yeah. and i really feel like i missed a big opportunity not to, talking to him to be fair like Near the end of his life, it was it, it was he was kind of a shell of himself, you know. I, I don't say that disrespectfully. It just it just wasn't the same. So, I think just to, you know, I, I think earlier in life it would have been better, even you know five years ago. But later in life, it just it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. So I don't think. I mean, you wouldn't have got the real him. I think living through like stories from you know other people, other refs. You know, Ray Anthony was someone that was super close to him. Uh, you know, my grandfather really groomed Ray to you know be a successor. That was always the plan. And, you know, guys like Toby Dunlap and, you know, all those guys, uh, they, they've really took care of him. Um, so I think like, you know, his legacy is really, I think, succeeded by the stories about him, the personal relationships and just, you know, the state tournament. I mean, you see his art all over the state tournament. He was a huge part of, you know, making the tournament what it is now um, with a lot of guys, Jim Hutelling and, and just a, a ton of people that I think. It is what it is, and I know that his contribution to it is 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 huge. Um, so I, I do. That's part of the reason I take great pride in the state tournament too. Obviously, being from Ohio, um, being able to take part as a as an athlete, as a coach, but you know, also obviously the kind of the family side of it as well. Those guys uh, that you just talked about, the two hat officials uh, in Toby and Ray Anthony, man, those guys have always been really good to me. So shout out to both of those guys. Whenever there's been like an educational moment where I can learn or they can learn. I remember, you know, the thing that I really hate is they got that, that really awful rule with uh, when the guy tripods up and the guy will jump on his back and 
right. they call the bottom end for stalling. But the way you and I are geared and what yeah. and the way it's always been for us is who's the onus on to put the man down. Right. Top, right. Right. You know, and he's helped me correct, but it's an awful rule. But, you know, Toby's always been able to, uh, whether it's Toby or Ray, they're like, yeah, no, that's how it's called. And I'm like, you gotta be, it's, it's, it's wrong. And they know it's wrong, but it's like, that's what the rule book yeah. says, right? Yeah. High school is, high school is rough, man. It is really bad as far I mean, as, I mean, there's just as much, I mean, think about even college. I mean, the way stalling's called in college is like, I mean, it's. Oh, the drop down rule ball and. You could ride, I mean, you could hang on that ankle for four seconds, jump back up. And now yeah, you know, everybody games that. And then it's crazy because the, the danger count is from a St. Ed's guy, right? It's, it's from yeah. high. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy to think about it, but like, yeah, th- those guys and you, you know, your grandpa, uh, what Lyle Smith was another one, right? Yeah. Lyle Smith was another yeah. one in that group. That's like, as far as head, head rules, interpreter and head officials. Uh, I've always had great relationships with all those guys, whether, and I, you know, our, our officials are getting thin, man. It's getting thin, right? Like it's, it's, it's scary. There. I mean, it's a, it's a real pressing problem. You know, I, I talked to, to Jared and they have a couple initiatives. Um, and I've been talking to Ray too. It's just, I, I mean, we need to have, you know, cause I, I always say, I say this more as just a, as a layman, but I don't think you could pay me enough to ref like, Hey, mm-hmm. you're going to pay me what a hundred, 150 bucks to coach and have, coaches or parents that don't know what they're talking about yell at me and tell me I'm a POS. I'm like, it's freaking youth wrestling. So, I mean, I've even, I get upset sometimes with refs, but I also realize me jumping down a ref's throat when I know that he's wrong is only going to create a bad experience for him. And if he doesn't come back the next year, we're down one ref. Yeah. That's something that I've, I've had to check myself because it's, it's a, it's a huge problem. I mean, there's a huge shortage in, in refs and I think we need as a community. And I think it starts with the coaches um, at the youth level is just like, we need to have a better relationship with refs because yeah, it's, it's not good. We do. And we got to do a lot, less of that guy sucks or that guy's not doing yeah. his job. I got to do more of this. Like, Hey, what can I do to keep these guys in this or keep these right. guys around or, or draw new? Because it's like, you know, man, I shoot videos of everything. You know that I, I shoot all the matches. I shoot more yeah. matches than anybody in Ohio and I see a lot, man. And it's just like, sometimes I'm like, man, these guys are overworked or we've been here too long. Or sometimes they'll make egregious calls. And I'm like, I, I gotta like, let it go, man. I gotta, I have to be yeah. better at being like, this is a youth tournament. These are, there's, I think there's a way to address it. I mean, you could wait until after the match, but it's also the attitude when you come to the table and you're walking on the mat, like, you know, see the guy walking on the mat. I want to have a, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. there's, there's a professional way. Like you can tell refs, they have to be professional, but I think there needs to be some reciprocity with the way that the coaches deal, uh, you know, just address referees in general, there needs to be. And I think this is something that I really commend Ray Anthony on is understanding that like, we're all in this together mm-hmm. and understanding that there does need to be a symbiotic relationship between the coaches, the athletes, and the referees. And that's the way it should work. We should be looking out for each other, helping each other and growing um, our sport as opposed to, you know, us first, the zebras. It's just, it just doesn't work, especially in a situation like now where we need every rep we can get. Yeah. And you, you guys travel with West shore, you know, West shore, two, two big things in your life, right. That have been constants in your life. Well, three big yeah. things would be West shore wrestling, St. Edward wrestling, defense soap. Right. But you know, right now, it's it's about to start rolling for you guys with the fence yeah and also with west shore what's that like for you guys when you travel and do a national schedule you know max seiko is going to be in reno he'll be in tulsa you guys as a company guys able to piggyback a lot of that right with the company and with west shore right yeah so it's i mean it's a lot it is this is always i always say this is the calm before the storm um and it there's a lot of times it sucks just cause it's a lot of long hours and stuff, but it's something that I'm super passionate about. It's been a big part of my life. It's been really rewarding to me. Um, it's my livelihood, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we'll have national middle school duels. Um, Gus and I will be down at super 32 before then it's super. Yeah. So two weekends of super 32 Gus and I'll be down there and that's a great event because there's, we see so many of our former teammates, um, form of our coaches and stuff like that. We'll see, you know, I'll see everyone from Steve Garland, Rob Cole, Troy Nickerson, Scott Moore. Um, I mean, all those guys. So it's kind of, 
that's a really fun event for us. And obviously the the competition is just super tough. I mean, that's gotta be, that's gotta be the toughest high school tournament for an open. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Um, and then we get to toss style. in all that folk stuff. style, folk style, super 32. Folk style. Folk style. Folk style. Folk style. Yeah. yeah. Out of season folk style. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so like the first half of the year, I'll say up until January. And then when we get to January, it's good because we just have more local events. It's more junior high stuff. You know, we do um, Mechanicsburg and North Allegheny and Pittsburgh, and then it's all the OAC stuff. So it's kind of front loaded. All the big national stuff is the first half of the season. And the second half of the season is more, I say it's more like community stuff. So um, taking care of our guys, doing OAC stuff and just doing more local team events as opposed to, you know, the big national all-star type events that, um, you know, not, not all of our kids can wrestle in that. You know, if you're a a mid-tier intermediate or, you know, beginner, you just can't do those events. They're just not suitable for you. And that, that makes it hard too, because we want to make sure those kids are getting competition and they're getting coaches, but you know, it's tough to, to find events for, you know, 80 different kids. Last year, when I came to the West shore practice, um, I don't think anyone's ever like gone and filmed a West shore practice. I don't know. Right. Is that accurate? No. Yeah. Yeah. No. The feedback I got was, they're running a college caliber room. Look at look at the coaches. Look yeah. at the workout partners. Look at how they're wrestling. They couldn't believe it. People were like, "That's why you can't beat St. Edward." It's in their room. It's it's in Yankee Stadium, right? It's like if you yeah. had a youth team, if you had youth youth baseball, Pony League baseball you know, little league baseball, if they're playing in Yankee stadium, practicing in Yankee stadium, what are most of them going to be? They're going to be yeah. Yankees, right? Yeah. People, yeah. The feedback I got from that was incredible, Charlie. Yeah. We take, I mean, we take great pride in it. You know, we have a tough room and you know, everyone, you know, obviously it's, we, we have a lot of good kids, but you know, I even, I talk about St. Ed's too. I mean, it's, uh, I think I always, Ed's always says, you know, oh, they get the the Lance Palmers and the Ryan Langs and and you know guys like that. But for me, it was, I think what really separates Ed's is I think I'm a great case study because I never thought I was going to start there. Um, you know, I think taking a mid tier guy and making him a state finalist or a state placer, um, I really think that's Ed's special sauce. You know what I mean? Like, great example, someone like Ryan Lang. Ryan Lang was on my team. Um, he's actually coming in the room a little bit recently um, too. He's doing fantastic. So super happy for him. But you know, he probably would have been a four timer at Brexville where his brother went um, or somewhere else. I mean, he was just a super, super talented guy. But I, I can say with a, a lot of certainty, I don't know how many other places I could go where I walk in as a as an average wrestler and end up having the career that I do. Um, so it's yeah, I mean, it's we work really, really hard. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, as they get the best guys and all that stuff. And I'm like, a lot of the times it's like, I don't take it personally, but it is kind of insulting. Like, oh, we just get good guys and sit on our butts. I'm like, we work really hard. Our parents make a lot of sacrifices. Our coaches make a lot of sacrifices. I mean, our schedule, you know, I don't have a free weekend for, you know, five months out of the year. Um, so we make a lot of sacrifices because it's important to us. And I think developing developing wrestlers is great, but developing, you know, young men to be, you know, great human beings is something that I take much more pride in. Moving on to, you know, Cornell, you were in a position where you could get into Cornell. And I think that's another big thing. I don't think people send their kids to St. Edward to really go to, you know, no, no shame, but Kent State. I love Kent State. Had yeah. a bunch of Kent State, Kent State, uh, St. Edward Eagle teammates, Jeremy Orski, Ryan Kinley, uh, Namath, Nick Namath, Mike Tolar. They were awesome, right? Those guys yeah. were awesome. I love those guys. They're great guys. They're still friends. I'm still friends with all those guys. Yeah. But I, in all honesty, when you're sending your kid there, you want your kid to go to the best place they can go. And maybe that was the best place for those guys, right? But you got right. to go to Cornell, man. You got to go to the Ivy League. Um, and Obviously, that had to be your expectation and conversations with your dad. I know your dad was yeah. really big in, you know, into your development and you being a St. Edward Eagle, but Talk about going to St. Edward and having the opportunity to get into an Ivy League school and then wrestle for them. Yeah, so I think right now, I think we have 14 kids wrestling Division One right now. I'm not positive on that, but I think it's like- They all good. have NILs through Defense Soap. Uh, yeah, w the first year we did it. This year we like, we still will give them stuff, but it's not as in everyone's face. You know, we like, because it was such a, a hot button topic, we we did it just to like, kind of play the game with everyone else, but 
when our guy stuff, when our guys need stuff, we can send it to them. Got so it. That's what it comes down to. Um, but yeah, I mean, to be like, I always thought I was like good, but I never thought I was like, like, I didn't, to be honest, even like going into my senior year, I was like, I don't really know if I'm going to have the opportunity to wrestle in college. I, I didn't really think about college wrestling. And then the first recruiting day came and I got a lot of calls, you know, mostly from the Ivies. Um, and I was like, well, I could probably go to Ivy League school. I have good grades and it seems like they want me to wrestle for them. So, you know, I was really fortunate. It's not, you know, expectation in my house was you're getting straight A's or nothing. You know what I mean? It was very high academic standards. Um, what, so were I, I got what were your that? test scores? What were your test scores? They weren't, they weren't crazy. Like my SAT, maybe like a, maybe a 1300. That was when I was on a 1600. Yeah. But I'm saying like, the like average, dude, well, come on. The average, the average Ivy league kid has like a 1500. Okay. What was your ACT? I didn't take it. Because once you got you what you needed on the SAT, you're well, right. it was so. I, I I think it's changed, but I think it was based on They're not, they don't use it anymore. They don't use either of them anymore. Really? Yeah, they don't use them anymore. No. Oh. Well, that was a COVID thing. Thing. That's a COVID thing. Okay, so it was um, it was your GPA, your class rank, and your test score. So my test score weren't great, but I think I had like a four two, and I was like ranked I think like fourth or fifth in my class. So that's what what really helped me. Um. And I had really good visits, but I remember, I'll, I still remember to this day, I, I had still an answering machine, like an old landline answering machine from Steve Garland, um, who's the head coach at University of Virginia now and someone that I've just stayed dear friends with. Um, but they, I always just had a good vibe with Cornell. Uh, it was him and Derek Del Porto that came over, did, they did a home visit. So Mama Ann made like stuffed shells and it was just, oh. you know, drinking beers with Papa Joe and drinking wine and this stuff. So it was just, it was a really good fit. Um, the grappa, the yeah. grappa, the grappa, man, the grappa's oh, that's, that's rough. too much for me. Grappa's rough, dude. <laughs> I know. Nice byproduct, by the way. It's like the bottom of the press, I think. Oh yeah, I know. So yeah, you know, to me, it's not like I always like had this huge, and, and this is like before flow. So you didn't have like, I mean, kids have so much access to like college programs. And what is it like for us? It was like, you literally had to borrow a, a VHS tape and rewind it. You know, it wasn't, you didn't have the same kind of access. So I didn't really know that it was a, a possibility. And when I had that chance, you know, Coach Urbis always talks about, you know, use the sport and let the sport use you and see what kind of doors it can open for you. Um, yeah, sure. I had good grades, but I think the athletic component and having a coach recruit you and, and kind of streamline that process. It made it really easy on my family. Um, and then the whole, you know, there's no uh, athletic scholarships, but you know, the financial aid and the different um, kind of just like financial vehicles they have there. You know, I was in something called Cornell tradition fellowship, which is uh, there's like a community service aspect to it and a work aspect to it. So I paid, I paid uh, for a lot of stuff just by getting involved in a lot of stuff. You're going to love this. I remember I won, it was a, I think it was a seven hundred fifty dollar a year scholarship from the Greater Cleveland Brothers and Sisters of Italy. It was a scholarship for that. Like I applied for everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think I had like a, it was like a, I got a thousand dollar scholarship for there was like a Howard Ferguson. I applied to everything because you know I, I had to. Um, did they but, you know, ever sure. win the ethnic chameleon scholarship? I didn't. I didn't. That wasn't. It wasn't available. It wasn't, wasn't available. available. Yeah, <laughs> you should. You know what you could have done. You could have just applied Greek scholarships, <laughs> Turkish scholarships. That's yeah, yeah, the stolen valor. Iranian stolen scholarship. Valor. You could have just done them all. Uh, it, can, it can. It's it's stolen valor. I can't do that. I mean, what if there's like a Turkish? Those kid videos really... were the best videos ever. When the people go up and they're like, "Hey, man, what unit are you in? Hey, where'd you serve?" <laughs> I know. Oh, it makes my skin crawl. It's like, man. Well, yeah, like, what are they doing? Like, <laughs> yeah, I can't believe people. It's crazy. <laughs> Thank you. That was amazing. You got me crying, dude. That was so well, it's a, it's a big joke. So oh. I remember one time. So my, so my, all my friends. Um, so my cousin, Alex Moore, he's a Cleveland firefighter. One of my, my dear friends, uh, his name is Mike Boyd. He's a Cleveland police officer. And then two of the other guys that I'm real close with, they're both police officers, Ben Miller and, uh, Wyatt Woodrell and they give me like you know Cleveland police shirts or whatever and I'll wear it because they get me a, a police shirt or fight and I remember the one time we walk in we like lifted and we go to like uh Robex we get like shakes after right because I'm I'm a fat guy it's like I, I just lift so I could get like a peanut butter smoothie right 
And uh, <laughs> so I walk in there and I have a, you know, Cleveland fire thing. And they're like, oh yeah, we do a uh, 15% off for all firefighters. And they ring it up and I'm like, whoa, whoa, I'm not. So then they're all with me and they're like stolen valor over here, getting uh first responder discounts. So yeah, it's uh so do you roll it when someone's like, are you Iranian? Are you Greek? And do you roll with that? I just, I just make them guess. I make them guess. You make them guess. I, I bet you that was like quite the icebreaker with the ladies. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends because some ethnic is like you have to be something certain. So I just mind my P's and Q's. But then they find out they find out this and then Aliana like, Sicilian and it's kind of what kind of what kind of what kind of grift is this guy running? That's what they think. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Thank you. That is amazing. Okay. <laughs> uh, so at, thank you for the the Italian. What was the actual scholarship that you won? Uh, it was. I think it was the Greater Cleveland Brothers and Sisters of Italy. I think that's what. Oh it was. my god. Yeah. What is okay? So just for people who don't know, if they can get past the stolen valor and the ethnic chameleon stuff um what is the actual model the need-based model at an ivy league school like cornell how do you pay for it you know it's obviously over i think it's over 75 grand now a year yeah, it's it's changed honestly yeah they applied rules that man it sucks sometimes to think about it. They applied rules that like a year after I graduated, I probably could have got everything paid for, never had any student loans, nothing. But to be fair, I, I was pretty lucky. I already, I actually paid my student loans off in the last two years. Um, so I didn't have a lot, but it, I mean, it, it's need-based, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's, it stinks now because the conversation in my era was family saying, how are we going to afford this? The conversation now is parents saying to college coaches, how much money are you going to get my kid in NIL money? Isn't it wild? It's, it's it stinks. Like it, I think it's taken so much the the purity out of the sport. Um, but I mean, money talks. Yeah, I mean, think about this. You got a guy like a, a Marcus Blaze is a world champion, right? He's gonna make six figures. Someone's gonna pay him six figures. You look at all the Northwestern no. three that transferred out to Michigan. They're paying those guys. I know Cornell really wants Marcus Blaze. Sure. But you know, at the end of the day, well, now, I'm just saying you have some influence there. So, okay, <laughs> the Blazes are are iron workers, though. You know that, right? Like they're they're the business agents for my my Papa Ferd. Really, Joe, Joe Blaze one was Papa Ferd's age. Joe Blaze two is my dad Tom's age. Joe Blaze three is Ferd, my brother Ferd's age, like a little younger. And then Joe Blaze four is like my nephew Owen's age. No kidding. We go tit for tat with the uh, no. Seriously, there. The reason my dad has uh, such a good retirement is because of Joe Blaze two. Really. And then Joe Blaze one, it was it was different because Joe Blaze one, and Papa Ferd were the same age. They lived through the depression, and iron workers and all workers and all people for that matter. Yeah. They didn't want an annuity they didn't want a roth ira they didn't they want the money in their hand right because they went through banks being yeah. closed you can't, you can't trust them, right before fdic and all you know yeah 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 so joe blaze one was a lot different than um joe blaze two because then joe blaze two got them to buy into annuities investing your money moving forward whereas joe blaze one could never convince Old, you know, World War II veterans, Papa Fur. Yeah, it's never going to happen. You right? didn't care about any of that. It wasn't yeah. their money, right? Put it and, under the mattress. Yeah, yeah. Stuff it in the mattress until the, and the house burns down and it's all gone. But like, that was the, that's the thinking though from one generation to the other. And those guys right. were, they were the business agents for local 55 iron workers and they had to change the mentality and help these guys. But my dad's got a, he does it really well in his um uh, retirement. Yeah. And it's because of Joe Blaze too. So yeah, I mean the Blazes are just fabulous people, man. They're, they got it's a great family. How's, uh, how's Joey doing at Purdue? Great. He's going to be a fifty-seven pounder. So is he going to yeah. retro? Or is he going to throw? I think the... they're going to wrestle. Hell yeah! Awesome. I can't speak. You know, what I mean, I I think, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and those guys really crawled through the mud for a while and got a lot of kicks to the teeth and had a bunch of guys losing the round of twelve in twenty twenty two in Detroit and then yeah, kicked the door in in twenty twenty three and you know had one of the most 
historic NCAA match performances in history, right? Right. Biggest upset in history. I think we can all agree on that, right? Yeah. And um, Coach Erzlin and his staff is doing a really good job there. And I just, yeah, yeah I, I want to see them be wildly successful. And, I, you know, it, it's so hard to win in the Big Ten and Division One college wrestling, as you know, Charlie. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, look what your alma mater has done as, as a, as a non-scholarship Ivy League Crazy. school. It, it's really unreal. And then to sustain the level that, that Coach Gray has been able to sustain. Yeah. You know, you see, you probably, you and I even, right, like, you're going to see maybe there's going to be there's going to be a dip or a fall off but there was not a dip or a fall off from Cole to I mean, Mike, Mike Ray, right yeah Mike cares so much um I mean he's, he's dedicated his whole life to that I mean it's it, it truly is remarkable the the amount of commitment he's put in the program I mean it is I talk about this all the time so I mean the Mike's got three kids and when you have Vito and Yanni and at the time Kyle like you're gone overseas I mean how many weeks out of the year on top of the college thing and then the recruiting yeah. it's just I mean the sacrifice that not only he has to make but that he has to make for his family and the sacrifices they have to make I mean it's it really is remarkable what coaches of programs like that do and, and on top of it Mike Gray texted me this morning they put in their defense soap order so even more happy with him how can you not like the guy yeah, all Cornell, right? And then on top of it, next weekend, open to anyone. Um, St. Ed's is having the Cornell guys out for Saturday and Sunday. It's 150 bucks. Open to anyone. Um, they will have Yanni there. They will have Vito there. They'll have Meyer Shapiro, U20 champ there. Pretty good. Uh, and then everyone, Mike Gray, Frank Pirelli. Wait, uh, Wiz? Gwiz will be there. Kellen Russell, then Donnie Vincent. They came last year. It was, it was incredible. Um, and they're doing it again. So shout out next weekend. St. Ed's 14th and the 15th. Eagle's nest. Eagle's nest. Is it going to be weird rolling into the super 32 and see Rob Cole rocking the baby blue, the Carolina, Carolina blue. blue. Now it's, it's, you know what? So I'll say this to Rob's defense. Cause someone told me they're like, yeah, Rob just bounces around. I'm like, what are you talking about? He was at Cornell for 30 years. And he always said, even when I was there, he always said he would love to end his career in North Carolina, his alma mater. Not many coaches have the opportunity to do it. And I even saw it. So the reason I went to, to, to Cornell really was Steve Garland. I mean, I was he was the guy I was there for. And my junior year, he left. And the reason he left is he had an opportunity to coach, be the head coach at his alma mater at University of Virginia, and he took it. Um so, yeah, it's, I mean, Stanford, I get it. I mean, he had his own administrative problems at Cornell. Um, so that's why he made that move in the first place during COVID. And he had the opportunity that, you know what I mean? He, he probably wasn't going to have that chance again. So, you know, you might have people that are haters and all that stuff, but he has always said he wanted to end his career there. And I think that's where he wanted to settle down with his wife. Um, so it's a unique opportunity. Obviously, he's going to create a ton of excitement in that program. Coleman has obviously done a great job. Um, I think he's planning on keeping Tony for now, at least Ramos. Um, but I know he's, he's really excited to be there. I texted him um, when he signed that job. Cause I know it was really important to him. Um, but yeah. And I think who just got the uh, airs, right? Airs went out to Ayers Stanford. Stanford and then Dubuque stepped up at Dubuque uh, is, is Joey, Joey, Joey D Tiger King. Yeah. Joey D Tiger King. I love it. Tiger King. <laughs> Yeah, coach, I mean, was, Joey, coach Joey D. Tiger King. Yeah, he was a he was a bad dude. He was a Real bad, bad dude. dude. He had a good head of hair. Good head of lettuce too. Yeah, he looked like a he kind of looked like a more like a lion, I guess, like that mane. Yeah, dude. it was like a mane. Seriously, it was, it was a really good head of got a uh, had a hair there in Bloomington. He wrestled ah. my boy. He wrestled my. He beat my boy though, Troy Nickerson. Head coach, <laughs> University of Northern Colorado. Also, clients of Defense Soap. So I got to give a shout out, dude. Listen. They, we, we do well with defense. So and you know that the Miller boys wash themselves with the family version of this every night. You, you know, the, that's you the thing, 32 right? Ounce. You got the 32 ounce big dog. Got the, that's a, that's one a in there. 32 ounces is everyone loves it. Well, I only like them to go one. That's fine. That's no okay. Product that last. So when you have hold up that little bottle, you see how that you have you have that cap there, right? Just a little tiny hole. So when it gets clogged up because we it's natural, so we don't use thinning agents, right? Because those are artificial. 
it gets you get like that booger in there and you gotta like squeeze but that yeah, pump that, that's it all that pump it just you know it just expels it out you yeah. know so it's and then the value on amazon so our amazon guy uh our partner said he's like if you guys make because the three amazon is so complicated but it's like a certain thing with like because it's it's free shipping so you have to get it like, like how do i deliver the most value to the customer at the cheapest shipping price where we can still make a profit and the 32 ounces in that perfect sweet spot where the customer is getting more product in a, a good form factor and it's it's good for shipping too based on the cost the size the weight all of that all right listen i'm a 128 oz guy i could do the 128 but I've been, I refill the 32s. Yeah, that's what gets, like it says, you get the clogging, right? Because yeah. that's, it's natural. I've been, I'm at, it looks like it's like a honeycomb inside of it sometimes. And that's, I just refill the 32s and all the three showers here. Yeah. And uh, that's how I rock, man. That's my, that's the Miller boys every night, man. And it doesn't right. dry their skin out. Some people, because uh, all the natural ingredients and the tea tree, some people's skin will be so. sensitive to it. So I bar soap, like bar soap is vegetable oil base. Uh, shower gel, coconut oil base. Coconut oil more moisturizing than vegetable oil. Yeah, so that's that's the big difference. We're using yeah. shower gel as Correct. opposed to, um, as opposed to uh, to the bar. Uh, yeah. Okay, so here's my jam. Okay, um, um, this is my. We got some indie wipes. Some indie dude, wipes. dude, dude. Your best product by far. These things have bailed me out of the grease. I tell guy, I tell you, first off, the amount of of, of uh, fluid on this and solution on this compared to this, it's, it, there's no comparison. This thing so, is hard. This so thing part, harder than that. Part of it is the cloth itself. And I won't, I'll just give a little bit of a teaser. Well, relax. Don't give away any industry secrets. I'm not, I'm not giving away industry secrets. Part okay. So you think that the individually wrapped wipes are they they hold more stuff, right? Oh, more, they're unreal. Okay. Well, there might be an improvement coming on the canister wipes in the next twelve months. That's all I'll say. I like it. I like. I like it. I, yeah, I got, you always got to get one of those. On. It's always you always got to have a grift. <laughs> what is that a grift? You guys are right down the middle. Listen, yeah, somebody was reading the guarantee to me on the uh, on the the, the bar. Right, they're reading yeah. the guarantee to me, and they're like, "You're not happy with this? You got you can like call these guys. There's eight hundred. What what is that?" And I was like, I "Think he's had like two people call him and they just send him their money back? I, is that yeah. real?" Yeah, I mean, like it's it happens very seldom, but sometimes like. Sometimes people will have an allergy to tea tree oil and they don't realize it. So they'll use it. And they're like, hey, I'm allergic to this. I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. We'll just send it back and we'll refund you. Or someone says, hey, I got a damaged product or UPS lost my, lost my package. And we just, just send it. Just, just do the right, do right by your customers. It, how, you know, do you feel anyone's ever taken advantage of you? Or is it pretty genuine when people do that? Um, I'd say it's a mixed bag, but... It's kind of like the whole Nordstrom philosophy is, you know, 10% of the people are going to take advantage of it, but why are you going to, you know, punish the 90% that don't, you know what I mean? So for the most part, I, I think just having a blanket policy is is the right way to do it. Are people going to take advantage of it? Yeah, but who cares? You know, you're not going to stop them all. I mean, how are you going to really vet them anyway? So that's true. And not to mention those people are going to get what's coming to them and karma yeah. anyway, I think. I mean, it's the way I look at life in general, you know, like they're going to get what they get, right? Uh, working with the staff you guys have, you have a really good staff, right? Like when every time I go there, it's, I feel welcome, whether Leah wants me to be filming her doing packaging or not. Dan's always like got something going on. You yeah. know, Gus is always working, uh, you know, to, to see if what joint he can wear out next. I mean, and then you got Guy and Ashley in the office, yeah. the kids are around and it's a family environment, but you guys, you seem to get along really well. How are you able to do that? Work with people, you know, sometimes six, seven days a week for for months on end. How are you guys able to have such good chemistry? And um, you know, how how much longer can you guys do this and have such good chemistry? You know, guy gives me this five to nine year window. You know, I, I'm sure yeah. you've heard about the five to nine year window, right? That window is getting smaller for sure. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. but when you buy boats and you can be out on the lake, I think the window's going to get smaller. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, honestly, it, part of it is just the culture, but I think the culture is driven by just a lot of good people. I mean, it's, we just have a, we're really, 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 really lucky. I'd love to sit here and say like, oh, we just have a company culture that's fostered all of this, you know, personal and professional growth. I, I just think we have great people. Um, you know, obviously Guy and Ash, but, you know, there's a lot of unsung heroes. You know what I mean? Like Dan, you know how much Dan does for us. And Leah's, you know, our main shipper. Um, we got Brian Timar, his son, Ethan Timar, state champ. He, he pretty much handles all of our production. I mean, he has been an absolute godsend. I mean, he has really stepped up and kicked butt and been such a valuable asset to us. I mean, he is someone that you can count on. I mean, he's, he's literally the first one there and usually the last one to leave. I mean, he is super committed. He's trustworthy, tons of integrity. Um, and then just even like these other people that we've brought in, you know, we're, we're always a little nervous when you get bigger and need more people. It's sometimes a little scary because you say, Hey, if I bring someone in, am I going to lose my culture? And the people that we've attracted, I think, love it. They they see exactly what you do. They're like, I love working here. My last job, no one gave a crap about each other. Um, so there's, I mean, it is, it really is special. It's it's something really unique. And as much as I'd like to say that we've done it, I think it's just we've we've been lucky in finding great people that want to be a part of what we're doing and and look out for each other and take care of each other. And I mean, they're just anyone can leave, literally anyone in the company, with maybe the exception of Dan, because he just knows how to do stuff that none of us do. But I think any one of us could leave and we'd be able to pick up the slack. And that's not a testament to um, anything other than I just think it's all hands on deck. I've always said that. Um, but we just have a, a really cool culture of of togetherness and, and cohesion. It's uh, it's pretty cool. The wildest thing for me was I was doing media with you guys in um, February, March of 2020. And the COVID hit and you guys were moving from the screw factory in Lakewood the big old industrial, like rust belt, you know, shell of a factory. Gritty. You know, liquid. Gritty. So gritty. Real gritty. We talked about that a lot, right? Like real I was gritty. always like, this is so gritty. I do the videos with the service elevator and it come <laughs> up and it was, it was something. But anyhow, you know, you guys were there and you did this move and you guys worked, you were working 70, 80 hours weeks, all hands on deck. And then, you know, you guys got into things like this, right? You got into yeah. keeping another cosmetic company alive in San Francisco or uh, Los Angeles, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, you're not hand sanitizer people, but it was a, a thing where you could make a deal. He still has boxes of it. I think we got, we got rid of it all. Finally. Did you? Yeah. Cause he'd always be like, yeah, take, take whatever you want. I'm like, oh, I don't <laughs> that was, a, we were late to the party on that one. That was like a thorn in our side, but it was at the time it was, you know what I mean? It was, yeah, it's it seems like it was forever ago, but man, what a weird I've said this so many times. What a weird time. So from, weird. from work, from school, prof I mean, it was it was a strange time. Bizarre world, man. Yeah. Such a bizarre but term. hey, two things that sprouted up from that. Number one, on your left shoulder, the wipes, right? Unique canister, the oval canister that oval came canister up. Into that. Yep. And then right. on your right hand, the individual wipes that popped up out of COVID. So blessings in disguise. Dude, I'm telling you. Why why do you like what's what's so great about that? Is it the convenience of an individual? The convenience wipe? of it, it goes in your pocket. Um, one wipe here is about equivalent to two wipes here. Because it's in here, it's self-contained. I think it's bigger. If I were to pull them out, I think this is bigger. Am I wrong on that? I think they're both seven by nine. I'm pretty okay. sure. And and guy explained to me this is like blown, it's blown onto a plastic screen. Yeah. It's tough and durable. It's like a spider web, he said, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's I don't know exactly the whole process, but yeah, it's it's like a wood pulp. Yeah, it's wood pulp blown onto a plastic screen, essentially, is what it is, like a spider yeah. web. He said. But this one right here. For me to articulate to, it's real easy. It goes in my pocket. This then serves as a trash for your disgusting uh, wipe, but it depends what you're doing with the wipe. The also, wipe very little plastic. That, you're just throwing it away. Very little plastic in that. Yes. This thing is like a foil, almost like yeah, a foil correct. metallic type deal. This thing is, so you can do four of these. 
I can do four of these in my pocket, right? And if Tommy or Ferdy's like, Dad, I got to go to the bathroom. Easy, right? Waterproof, don't matter. That thing could fill with water and then you got a bunch of, then you got a yeah. bunch of uh, uh, river water wipes. This doesn't do that. Um, these are easy to throw in the bag. All my bags have them. All the doors of my cars have them in there. Yeah, and same. Dude, this is just like the model of convenience right here. This thing is just like, I love them too. About it. I love them. Dude, I'm telling you, this one though is for me, this just, and there, there's more fluid on these than there is on those. Yeah. This is more there's, moist. There's actually the same. I just think the cloth is more absorbent. Yeah. I think that's actually I'm, what it is. I, I mean, I just, I, I've told them every time I see them, I'm like, I, I love them. They're the best thing ever. And it's not like it's zero exaggeration. It's super utilitarian. Yeah, I agree. I'll say, like I, uh, I mean, school, people school, that go school. camping, people that do that is the summer camping. Say bailed me out of the grease big time in Allegheny National yeah. Forest, and then there you're, I was just able to burn it. You know what I mean? Like I didn't yeah. have to worry about. But like one of my kids on the trail, like Dad, I gotta go to the bathroom. Boom, right there. Throw it in a plastic bag. All good. You know what I mean? Like it's right. it, it's just it's super handy. Whereas that, dude, we packed my boys packed down. We packed down the mountain, you know, over a thousand foot loss. They, we packed, uh, my pack was probably 50 pounds. Yeah. They're both like 12 and 14 pounds. And, you know, they're, they're seven and five years old. I was pretty impressed, but they had all their food and they had all their clothes and theirs, but they couldn't, you know, uh, my wife put the bladder, the water bladder in there. Yeah, yeah. With the camel back, whatever. They had all their stuff. Yeah. And it was like really impressive, awesome. but each of them had those. And that's what we cleaned up with is that that's the jam right there, man. That, right. that, that's like my pitch for that is it's just, it's so utilitarian. Yeah. But I noticed a lot of people at events now will buy the canister wipes and they'll bring the individual wipes. Canister wipes go in the wrestling bag, the individual wipes, you know, travel, pocket, hotel, wherever. Pocket. Pocket yeah. or the little, the little pouches on backpacks, always there. Oh yeah. Always that's where I put mine. I literally always have like five, 10 of them in there. Yeah. That's all I do, man. They're, they're, they're really, really awesome. And, you know, my cousins swear by them now. They've been buying them and it's just, it's awesome to see such an organic thing. Ah, uh, as far as new products, you know, obviously, you know, I'm an individual wipe guy. I'm a, I'm a pop, pop body, yeah. body wash guy. Um, what, where are we at with new, new so, products? Um, before the end of the year, we should have our antifungal cream out. You get a little spot of ringworm, booyah. Um, that's been a long time coming. And then something that we're still working on, I told you, it's it got halted for several reasons. I, I won't get into the particulars, but that shampoo bar. Yeah, too, the, so. Well, it's actually a dandruff shampoo bar. Yeah, yeah, I explained it to you, yeah. So well, guy, Guy's been talking about it a lot, too. Yeah, dandruff is a type of fungus, but you can't make an antifungal claim on a shampoo. You can only make an anti-dandruff, even though most people don't know dandruff is a type of fungus. Yeah. So it's the I mean, whole FDA word game. What do you think if you right now, I mean, I know that we've talked and you guys had, you, you've meandered, right? You, you yeah. were trying to get into the big box stores that didn't work out, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's just things you've done and kind of putting things against the wall, see what sticks, see what's going to, you know, fit your culture of a company. But where does defense go with the dandruff bar? If you keep getting roadblocks, do you just abandon it? No, I, th I think we can, it's still, there's, there's still a path to kind of having it materialize. It's just... It's just, it's honestly, it's always having to play the FDA game because you yeah. want to say, you want to be clear with people and tell people this is what it's for. This is what it does. But the FDA doesn't allow you to say that. Like when you look at the back of a FDA registered product and you see that drug fact label, if you look at the wording, you have to use that exact phrasing and verbiage every single time. So do you have an antifungal bar there? I have... I do not have one. Um... So the FDA comes out with what's called a monograph and it's like a 10 page document. And they say, Hey, if you want to make a product that's making a claim of antifungal, you need to use one of seven of these ingredients. And you can only say this, 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 and this. So stupid. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's for consumer protection, but I think a lot of the times you end up confusing the end consumer, but you also prevent people from making bogus claims. And that happens a ton, especially when it comes to Amazon. I just People will say it's natural and antifungal. I'm like, if it's antifungal, it has an FDA approved ingredient that is not natural, which makes it not natural. 
So it's just it's it's trying it's to it's word create salad. clarity. Yeah, it's word salad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, my thing is like me personally, like I'd like to have this as a dandruff. That'd be nice. You could do you you could try that in your hair. It's it'll it might no, dry. No, no, no. I I do that. Oh, hold on, hold on. You're talking to a total hillbilly. That goes in my no. I'm, goes I'm saying, in my if, hair. if your hair is long, it might dry it out. Yeah. For me and for you, it's not an issue. That is what I want to replace, though. I want that. Okay. Yeah, to replace that. That's just the way I'm looking at. It. You know what I mean? Like, and I think you guys are there, but I think bars have always been. It's the basis of everything. It's the foundation. Right. It's the bar. 100%. And I think some people who aren't wrestling, maybe grappling and jujitsu, I think they'll get on board with a bar. But like the regular people, I just don't know if they can like get it through their mind that this bar can be a dandruff and you can. You know what I think. Bar soap has made a big return. I think like bar soap used to be like, ah, oh, yeah, my dad used bar soap. I don't use that anymore. But if you look at like nationwide, the data, more people are using bar soaps than in the last five years. But Squatch, Squatch is a big one. Dr. Squatch. Yeah. Uh, Irish Spring. <laughs> I'm going to give you a, a what's the matter with you with that. What's the matter with you? Uh, when he looked at it, you know, a guy always talks about the price point. Was it six dollars? Is the price point right yeah. for, for a bar? He, dude, inflation's rampant. I know we've uh, we've been able to keep everything where it's at, um, and that's still our plan. I hope if everything comes down the way it should, then us not having to raise prices over the last three years would be something I'd be pretty proud of. Yeah. It's Sounds been, like you guys have been on the Arizona tea. Uh, what the, the, 90, the 99, 99 cents. cents turned to a dollar twenty five? It's crazy. You know what? I will say. I think it was probably two years ago we raised because our costs. I mean, we're getting just bent it's, over. It's not. Hold good. on, hold on. It's called simple economics, by the way. Let's just yeah. let's just go with that. Yeah, but uh, I think we raised. I think we raised the wipes. I think we raised them a dollar. And to be honest, the pushback was very limited. And to be honest, we were like, oh, we don't want to do this. But I mean, it was, I mean, we're, we're getting a hit on, on everything. It's during COVID in particular. I mean, it was brutal. I mean, it was everything. I, I mean, the, just the freight costs on some of these like raw materials were like four or five X. Like it was unreal, man. I know. And, and record profits too, on top of it. It's like, it didn't get more expensive. You just realize you can be greedier right now because people are desperate. Gouging at its finest. Yeah. Uh, you guys have conversations and I, I can't imagine you do, but do you have conversations of a guy Seiko out on the boat retired and oh, yeah. the company runs? Does, is that something that you guys discuss? Yeah. I mean, guy will tell you too. Like, I mean, over the last... I'd say probably six to eight months. Like we've, we've taken over quite a bit um, between Gus, Dan and myself. Um, Leah has always just been kind of rocking and rolling on shipping and she has like an, an assistant kind of now. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've taken over a lot of it um, already um, in kind of preparation. And I think it's been pretty seamless. You know, guy will sometimes say like, Oh, you guys outgrew me and you get, you know, but some of the stuff we're doing now is just, you know, he said it's either over his head, he doesn't have the energy for it, or it's just too technologically advanced. So part of that is like also like the kind of the transfer of some of these relationships. So a great example would be World of Wrestling. Jack Roller has run Tulsa for the last, whatever, 30 years, and he's slowly getting out of it. And his son, Shane Roller, who wrestled for Oklahoma State, you know, total badass. Um, he's kind of taking this stuff over now. So as Jack has kind of handed that re relationship off to his son and kind of groomed his son. Guy's kind of done that with, you know, basically the three headed monster of, of Dan, Gus and myself. So it's, it's in the works. And I think guy is, is looking forward to it. Um, just to kind of, you know, handing it off and knowing it's, it's in good hands, but, you know, I would say probably in the next, I would say anywhere between the next three and five years. That's something where you guys, you know, I mean, he's realistic he's he's uh brutally honest i think he gets it he thinks that think that i think he likes boat rides i think he yeah. likes oh dude how about the guy bought a boat in chicago and and drove it here i would have liked to have been a fly on the wall or just like a regular passenger 
Who was with him? He hired a captain to basically go around the Great Lakes and bring it in. Yeah, he's it was like it's something that he's always wanted to do to do the Great Lakes. But it was uh, when he was doing this, he was like, I was like, is this, is this are you going to be OK? Like, is this is this safe? You know what I mean? But he, he made it happen. It's a, obviously a gorgeous boat. What did it take three, four days for him to do it? No, he was gone. I don't know. I want to say it was like 10 days. Was it a week? Over a week? Two weeks almost? Yeah, like that. Yeah. Well, when he told me he was hiring a captain, it made me feel better. Because you have to go through like locks and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, you know, though, you, yeah, that, so it's like, you got to be able to not hit the sides of the lock, the front, It's because it's yeah. like a wall. It's a wall. You're. It's a floor. <laughs> Hey. It's a compartment to raise up or lower yeah. the water because you have to do that through, I think, I want to say Lake St. Clair, Detroit yeah. River, Lake St. Clair. Yeah, I don't I don't even know what public high schools are in the city of Cleveland, and you want to know if I know if it's Lake St. Clair? <laughs> My dad said growing up, Lake St. Lake St. Clair was actually a uh, a great lake, he told me. Really? It, it was what there were six great lakes when my dad was growing up. Okay. Not five. Mm. Learn something new every day. Hey, hey, one of my favorite things ever, though, about you. What's that? Obviously, you can see it everywhere, but you know where I'm coming from. You know mm. where, what I want to know about. You know this is deeply rooted in your mm. family. Where does this version of Wahoo come from, Charlie? It comes from my grandfather. This guy. From this, the, this it comes from your grandfather's hand. It comes from it comes from his hand. Yeah. It's Literally. Right. I'm not like zero exaggeration. Yeah. Yeah. A big one of these for that. Oh, that's that's like here, and then you go yeah. that's a double. I mean, yeah, like that is that tell talk tell me the story how Vince Petucci came to draw this version of yeah, so he was the art director for the Cleveland Plain Dealer for a number of years. I was always in art, went to art school, has had, you know, ton, I mean, even this is just over my shoulder, Vince Lombardi. Um there's a lot of wrestling stuff too, but yeah, he was an art director and I think he got commissioned to, to kind of update it um, while he was, he was there. And that's, that's who's responsible for it. I actually, I had a talk with, what was it yesterday? I had my, my weekly call with Shane Sparks and uh, I told him I was doing a podcast with you and he's like, Oh, tell Zeb. I said, hi. He's like, let me guess. He's going to be wearing a chief Wahoo hat is what he said. He's a, he's a big fan of, of Zeb Miller. I know that. I like Shane. Shane's a great guy. Shane's done my podcast before. Awesome. Does he? Yeah. 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 He, you know, and he got picked up and Shane's the reason that you guys are, that, that you guys are so strong with flow wrestling. Yeah, with flow. So, yeah he does a lot um, for us. What was the series that you guys sponsored with flow wrestling and the top uh, wrestlers and the American wrestlers? Yeah, top 100, top 100 wrestlers. That was our big one. So two years ago we did top 100 wrestlers this past year. We did, it's not even finished because it was a three part series, but they had a hold up was Young Bucks. So it was uh, Bozakis, Feldman, and Jesse Mendez. They focused on them. And then our upcoming one, I can't... Can I tell you? I don't know if I can tell you or not. He's. A, I'll say this. He's a, it's, it's about a Cornell guy. Oh. So that'll be... That'll be coming up. In the I future. think that that's good. What you just did. I mean, if I'm, if I'm thinking it's a Cornell guy and I knew who I'm thinking. There's a couple good ones. There's, I mean, we no, got I it. Understand, world I understand champ. that. Got, there's one. It's a world timer. Do you know there's only. I mean, how many, how many uh, D1 four time NCAA champs are there? Six. Pat Smith, Kale. Uh, Logan Stieber. Yeah. Um, Big Yanni. Day count is that it? Five? Two, two of the two of the six are yell Cornell. Big Ten just can't pull it in. You know, Big Ten's good. Big Red's better. Dude, the Big Ten's only got one, right? Uh yeah. Steber. Yeah. Big twelve, I guess, has two because what? Big Oklahoma Big State and Oklahoma Iowa. State, Pat Smith, uh obviously Kale, yeah. right? Yeah. It's crazy. I know. The Big Ten has one, bro. I, I know. They're the garbage. <laughs> yeah, right. Man, Wait, the hold on, hold on. Let's count them again. Stop. Let's count them again. We got Pat Smith, Big 12. Yeah. Kale. Big 12. Big 12, right? Yeah. Logan okay. Steber. Logan Steber. Dave. Dave. Yeah, so Are we missing any? Only five. 
Man, but you, I mean, we could have Brooks, we could have Starachi. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. We could have had RBY. Oh, no, RBY. Yes, RBY could have because of the COVID year. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Because we playing. wouldn't have been like a true. Well, I think what Starachi and Brooks can technically, I think, can they, they can do five, five. I think timers? they can do five. Man. Yes, they can do five. I think Starachi does four, though, and then goes in the face punching. Are we missing any four times? If I if I if someone watches this and they're like, how did you forget? Oh, we're I think we're missing one. No, Dake was the fourth. Okay. Yeah. Dake was the fourth. Man. No, Steber was the fourth. Dake was the third. Okay. Hold on. You know what? I I don't want to I don't want to leave any stones left unturned. <laughs> Am I gonna have to look this up? No, I'm just percent. doing it. I mean, I don't want to look. Four time NCAA wrestling champions. Yeah. All right, ready? Actually, you know what popped up was uh my dude Fanko. Josiah uh is one of my guys. We do some stuff with him. Yeah, you do stuff with that guy? I know that yeah. guy. Pat Smith, Kel okay. Stanley, Kyle Dick, Logan Steve, Rihanna, Doc Amos. Doc Amalas. Man, there's only five forty percent. We were right. 40%. Hold on, hold on. We were right. We were right. Forty we percent of the four-time national champs come out of Ithaca, New York. Man, <laughs> like I said, in Big Ten, I guess the Big Ten just sucks. <laughs> they just suck. Hey, I think Penn State has more big, or they have more NCAA titles than they do Big Ten titles. Yeah, man, they're they're freaking. And honestly, this this might be their best team ever. They're so yeah. good. Oh, they're really so good. good, man. Hey, how do you think it affected Finger Lakes? With Kyle Dake leaving. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not that close to the situation. It's 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 obviously a better situation for Kyle, I would think. You know what I mean? He's training with uh with David um and some of those other guys. I mean, you can't say it's great. It it does it hurts in some ways, but at the same time, you have Yanni and Vito who are young. Uh, and they just, I mean, you could build a program around two guys that are still really relevant. Obviously, Kyle's very relevant too. Um, but to replace him is really, really hard. But I think when you have the personalities there too, I mean, have you ever talked to Yanni or Vito? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, they're just, they're just, I mean, you just I, I've talked to them in interviews, but I've also talked to them out, not in interviews. Yeah. Hey, yeah they're just, know. they're just great guys. I mean, they're Super funny. Nice guys. So, yeah, it, of course, it sucks to lose a, a four time, uh, national champ and you know multiple time world champ but i think when you have those two guys you know kind of stepping into that role and being the face of the program and veto just winning his title and still being in school i mean it's it's exciting so yeah i mean i think it's a it's a blessing and a curse right yeah you got a great way to to kind of prop up and elevate yanni and veto but you're losing you know who who was the face of the program for years and years and years how so, big yeah Oh, they, hey, you good. got me thinking, right? I think you could go over to the Caucasus, and um, I think you go to like uh, Dagestan and Chechen. Yeah. I, think, I think you could fit in there. I got, I got to grow. I think I'd have to grow the neck beard more. Like I'd have to take this away, right? Take this away. And yeah, then yeah, yeah, yeah. That's got to go. Really go like Henry David yeah. Thoreau down here. How about that I, reference? I think you could do Georgian. You could do the Georgians. Oh, Georgia. Georgia. Armeni- yeah, Armenians. You could fit in there. Azubajani. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Azubajani. I've never heard it pronounced that way. I don't. I don't think it's the way you pronounce it. No, it's Azerbaijan. Okay. So was it Azerbaijan? Ni? Ni? Would that be the? <laughs> or Azerbaijan? The Charlie version. Yeah. It's the Charlie. Iranian, version. You you called me Iranian, so that one's easy. Yeah, that one's super easy. And then I think that they are closer. Azerbaijan's just north yeah. of Iran. Because that's what? Uh, who's Aliyev's from there, right? Haji Aliyev's Azerbaijan, yeah. Yeah, he is. He he got he attacked. This guy's are really attacked? good, man. These guys are all really good. You know Dude, who I, I Gus, and, that... Gus and I love Muzakayev, mostly because how awesome he was and how he would just gas out. Oh, really <laughs> awesome. He's I mean, manic. He, he, the guy he, is he, manic. Did he just decide all of a sudden he was going to get in shape? Because he was incredible. I still don't think he's that that in great shape, man. I think he's just an explosive mutant. And the things he's doing and how explosive he is, I, who else can even do that? Like he's, he's like, an alien. Almost I mean, like a Saitiev kind of. 
I know. Like yeah, paying something, always. but like Satya never got tired at Buvicer. But it's yeah. like he's doing these things, and you're like, why was he doing that? I know. How about when I, I said, I, said him, dude. I was joking. I was like, I think it was he just decided to take like a Babe Ruth approach. Like Babe Ruth's like, I don't really want to run the bases. It's just easier to hit home runs. So I think he's kind of the same thing. It's like if I tech guys in four minutes, that means I don't have to wrestle six minutes. I like it. I know. I like it. Okay, what do you think about uh the two way class that we didn't qualify, 57 and 65? I think they're gonna qualify through the Pan Ams. Pan Ams, yeah. But I'm saying, what do you think about Michich and Seabass? I, I want them to be American the American team. <laughs> I know. And the other well, thing too, so Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory. So how are you able to? That's run? okay, but it's just like you have a bunch of territories that are still able to compete. As yeah. I, I think, like uh, maybe America Samoa. Don't quote me, but like America yeah. Samoa might have their own uh, sovereign something. Yeah, they they give them their ability to compete, and it's I think it's better and more parody for the olympics right like yeah listen and you know what? I, i'm not i don't want to draw them in and like take them out of the olympic games I, i'm not for yeah. that i'm not hating on either of them because they're americans but like I, I do think it's a we've arrived because i mean look at russia you have all these russian guys meddling for other countries and it's just like are we if we're of that tier now that's a good thing when you have depth i mean it means, it means an american i mean you yeah. know what i mean they're american yeah. they're not that's what i mean but as he you know, I mean, Kansas he, summer, by the way, what an awesome guy, fabulous humans, all of them, really nice people. Um, Miles, it means like a super nice, humble person. Cause yeah, you understand, man, when I'm dealing with these guys in the media situations, it's always like, ah, we want something from you. Right. And it's yeah. like, I get it when dudes are like, eh, I don't want to talk. Right. Yeah. Like, that guy's always like, no, I'll talk. I'll talk coach. It's okay. I'll talk. And it's like he don't know he don't know me anything, right? But he's always, right. always like willing to talk, right? The guy yeah. will talk to you, and and most wrestling guys will talk to you. They they're always going to want to talk, and they're always right. you know cause we're giving them a platform to speak, and I I think that they enjoy that. But once again, guys don't owe me anything. Um, Bo Nickel, Bo Nickel, kind of he you know Bo Nickel's on the I, I think he'd be the next big he is the next big thing, and uh. Yeah. MMA and last couple of times I've asked him, he, he hasn't wanted to talk, but I ain't mad at Bo Nickel. I get it. Right. But hey, Bo Nickel had conversation, told me his wife was uh let's say she was the Big Ten champ and uh heptathlon soccer player or something. What's that? Soccer? Or you said it sounds like uh, Nolf's wife is soccer. Okay, that's what I'm confusing with. Nolf's wife soccer, and then uh uh Bo Nickel's wife is uh she's heptathlon. Okay, I got I got one for you. Bo Nichols' sister, Shelby Nickel, NIL athlete, defense soap. Oh, really? Only because her father, Jason Nickel, good guy, great guy. Yeah, he works for a, a big athletic distributor called BSN. And I know what BSN is. <laughs> when we signed when we signed the deal with them, he's just like, my daughter loves your stuff. Can you send her stuff? And I was like, yeah, of course. This is when she was in high school, and then she got to college, and he's like, he's like. Can can you we do like an NIL deal? I'm like, yeah, like I'll send you products and all that stuff. She was super nice. What is she? she I don't know what she team. does. She's this, on the soccer team. I can't think of where it was. Uh, it's, it's somewhere in Louisiana. Um, okay, I think it's a D two school. But yeah, she was. She's a huge defense. So uh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But to the point of like how these guys will always. Talk. I don't fault a guy for not wanting to talk. Like uh, last time it was at the World Team Trials in in Jersey and. Yeah. Bo was there as a training partner and he was like, ah, no, it's about these guys. Oh, and whatever. Maybe he hates my guts or wants me to not wear a chief. <laughs> I, I don't care, but I get it. If the dude don't want to talk, that's cool. Jason, right. uh, Jason Nolf wanted to talk. That was awesome. And uh, he was always a guy that was like, you know, he didn't want to talk. He was, you know, super laser focused and right. it was cool. And, you know, David Taylor want to talk. It, it's, you know, things change. I get it. Like when a person don't want to talk to you, I never take it personal. I used to kind of be like, eh, man, what's the problem? Right. And I'm like, I've done, I've talked to so many different people. It's like, I've done tens of thousands of interviews. It's like, yeah. Plus work for me at this point. At this point. Uh, give me, who are some of your, your favorite people to interview? Uh, you know, uh, the Neil deGrasse Tyson guy is a super nice guy. Yeah. I mean, I talked for like 30 minutes before I was like, Hey man, want to do an interview? And he was like, uh, well, what, what about what? And I was like, wrestling. He's like, 
what do I, I, I don't really know that much, but then he was like super knowledgeable and he cared about the sport and yeah, he's, I, I would see him. a bunch of memes with like the stuff from the interview where it's like, we wrestle cause it's hard. And you know, we yeah. go to, the, you know, and he was, and he mixes intermingles, uh, uh, physics and yeah, yeah, heavenly bodies with the sport of wrestling, which I appreciate. <laughs> uh, Carlton Hasselrick, yeah, he just passed away a couple of years ago, right? Passed away about I want to say maybe a year and a half ago. And yeah. I talked to him in Pittsburgh, always love talking to Henry Cejudo. Henry Cejudo, super nice guy. Sure, he's got like a cringy MMA gimmick, but like, I, yeah, yeah. I like, don't, yeah, I've had uh, like. Like business talks with him, he's he was always very yeah uh, professional, very nice, and 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 he's, and he's it's all an act. And honestly, like if you want to get out, like you can look at Stipe. I mean, Stipe is one of the best heavyweights to ever do it, but he doesn't run his mouth, and for that reason, they haven't you know made him the Francis Naganu of things. You know? Yeah, they don't push him as much because he doesn't. Yeah, yeah. He, does, like he doesn't. He doesn't call Kobe, or Covington Greg. enough. Yeah, Covington. Covington. That's it's his whole thing, man. Right. Colby Covington and you and I went. We're talking to Colby Covington. He'd be cool. He'd be super cool if he came and sure. worked out at Defense Soap. That guy wouldn't be like, eh, yeah. Right. But the cameras come on and you're trying. Yeah. To, it's your livelihood. Yeah, and he he gets it. But like, uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of these guys. I think I've interviewed him. He's cool. Nice guy. Like, yeah. But I like, uh, man. Some great. We've had some great interviews. The Mako interview. You ever seen the Mako one? No. Was it for? I didn't, you serious? He didn't take his up and shoes off. He didn't. What you just interviewed him? What? What do you mean? It didn't was just... 2012, and he just lost to I want to say like Les Sigmund, and it was to go to the finals of the trial. But then he came back and he took the true third. Yeah, and his eyes dilated. His eyes all crazy. He's got like a mullet with like steps cut in. And he's like, huh? What? Huh? And he's just like, dude, hold on. <laughs> dude, you've, never a, seen this? you've never seen this interview? No, he's another one. He's another pre-flow guy that I'm like, people have no idea what an absolute terror he was. Remember in high school, what a psycho he was? Yes. Hold on. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm going to share my screen though. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me get it to, I'm going to go to the. I mean, were you like, were you scared? No, oh, you're going to love this stuff. Hold on. Can you hear it? No. Oh, I got to share my screen. Hold on. I haven't done this Zoom thing in a while. So just hold on. You're going to, this is uh, worth the price of admission, sir. Hold on. Here we go. Uh, bu- 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 yeah, I haven't done this thing in like forever. Whiteboard reactions. Your share screen. It's a big green button. It's a share screen. It's an arrow pointing up. All right. Hold on. Here we go. Uh, hold on. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. Advanced. Uh, nope. Hold on. I'm looking for it. It's got like a bunch of wait more desktop one google unknown let's see it let's share it let's see what's on here i gotta sh- i gotta do like some preferences hold on uh man it's asking for a lot here charlie Th- dude this is an all time is it as- is it like a security question this is worth it no 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 No, it's, it wants me to stop it, but I'm going to, you know what? I'll just put it on the, uh, I'll just put it on my phone right now and we'll, we'll watch it on the phone. How about that? I like that. We, we'll, uh, you know, we're going to troubleshoot here. How about that? He was, he was a bad, bad dude. All right. I'm going to put it out here. This is 2012 after uh, he came back and took the true third. What? He, he, yeah. He got beat and he came back and took the true third. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> so good, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Tell about the ball, the ball drawing. The ball drawing. I don't know how to come to it, you know. And John's winning that. I had the position. I could, you know, put the nail in. I did it. He won. Good luck to him. 
And then we can just mad yourself because you got to come down to the ball. Right. Right? And then you just mad yourself about the game. Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah. But what, what does third place mean to you? I mean, you came back, you got third. I mean, that's something, but it's not what you wanted, I don't think. No, no, it's not what I wanted. You know, a little surreal for me right now. You know, I have to get through like two matches. They're good competitors. Wish Les uh, to real luck. Everybody's talking about pride. How important this is for the pride. They talk about the pride of coming back, yeah. taking third. How important is it to your kids seeing you up in the stands and coming back in your pride and taking third? I mean, it's, you know, I, I wrestle full time. That's what I do for a living. I coach and wrestle. And that's what we tell people to do. And that's what you do in the sport of wrestling. And that's what you do. This is the last of Steve Michael and freestyle. I didn't take my fucking shoes off. So you're still yeah. still in it. <laughs> Were you just like, oh, uh, like, cool, man. No, nah, he's cool. Like, the other people were like, weren't you scared? And I was like, no, man, he, that guy's a cool guy. He's a nice guy. He just, he's intense in the moment, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Dude, like, come on. What are the chances of David Taylor smashing me in the face because I keep asking him about, uh, are you the next head coach at uh, some major school that's going to pay you double what they pay Kale Sanderson, right? Like, yeah. what are the chances, right? And here's the other thing. I've been beat up before. So it's like not really that big of a deal. <laughs> it's such a good way to say. Like, dude, I've been beat up before. Like, I, you got to. <laughs> hey, Charlie, have you been beat up before? Uh, Like physically in a fight? I mean, yeah. Have you ever been beat up before? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, like, dude, I, got... I, I got. Yeah, I think I always tell. Gray Maynard, I remember Gray Maynard pretty much in a wrestling room assaulted me. Like I was bleeding from every orifice on my face. It was, I it think was Jeremy Orsky beat the tar out of me a couple of times in college. I think, uh, I think, uh, Nick Magistrelli beat the tar out of me a couple of times, but I got to he's, give some he's back coaching. We got, we got Magistrelli coaching up in Northeast yeah. Ohio. Yeah. But Nick and I used to, we used to go at it with this guy, Jack Hagman. I had to fist fight him. He gave me this ear. Yeah. You know, there's lots of guys who I've like looked at. Oh, and my brother Tate used to beat me up a lot, like beat me up fist fight a lot. Um, buddy of one of my uh real good friends, Pat Kenya, a high school teammate, he used to beat me up. Like he was just big, stronger. You know, he was a two fifteen pounder. He was hard to deal with, right? Yeah. Um, you know, guys like that. Uh, Kenny Clark had a college teammate named Kenny Clark from Louisville. This hillbilly hurt me and beat me up all the time, and beat me at the state tournament as a senior. Yeah. So I mean, dude, I've had, yeah, my brother Chad. I've had my brother Chad beat me up a lot, and it's just like oh, speaking dude, of your family, I've been beat up. How's Ian doing at uh Western Reserve? Good. Ian's doing good. We got to get him into the uh, defense soap fold. We got to get all those uh yeah boarding students to make sure that they're uh, defending what they built. You know, I think no, that's the okay. big thing. We got to we got to get them them into it, and uh, yeah, we'll get them into the fold. I think that uh. If the administration will allow him, I think that's what it comes down to at those yeah. points. They'll cut you loose. I think you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything else for me? Did you miss anything? Did you enjoy that Mako interview? Of course. I, I mean, I grew up like, I was just always, I mean, he was, I, I can't even put into words. I mean, I remember being in high school and I think I was like probably a sophomore when he was a senior. And we were wrestling them all the time, but I was like, this dude, he's a certified psychopath. I mean, I was, you, and he, he drew such a crowd. I mean, he, no one could look away. I remember, oh, this is one of my favorite stories about Maka. So obviously Ed's and Blair, you know, a longstanding rivalry. And he's wrestling Dan Wendelowski from St. Ed's. Played football at Naval Academy. And just didn't know how to wrestle, but was just a great athlete. You know, just huge, you know what I mean? So he goes out there. And he was pretty nervous to wrestle Steve, and rightfully so, because Steve would eat your arm if he was allowed to. So I remember he freaking throws Dan to his back, has him in a headlock, and he's just squeezing him, and Dan's eyes are bulging out of his head, and he starts freaking out, saying he can't breathe. So he starts kicking his feet, and he's, like, punching Mako in the face, like, literally <laughs> punching Mako in the face. And Mako just, like, looks at him, gets his chin, and just puts it, like, right in his eye, and just, like, oh. just trying to carve his eyeball out. <laughs> and so he gets pinned and uh Mako just comes, you know, like the this guy, he's just like, he's just a bear. He's a bear. Yeah. And the dude was 
man, that's what we were talking about that today. Like just how many awesome guys just get forgotten because they weren't immortalized by, you know, just media in general. This wasn't the same kind of media and, coverage, but man, he was, he was a scary, scary, scary man. Still have is. you seen Michael Mako? Have you seen? Yeah. Gus and, I, <laughs> Gus and I are so terrified of both Michael and obviously his father. I'm like, dude, this dude, he's, he's a psycho. Dude, he, the Michael Mako is a lot like his dad, like super intense. He's taller though. He's like yeah. a taller. Yeah. And he looks like, he looks like his wife. He looks like the mom. Does he have like red hair, right? Yeah, he's a redhead. Yeah. yeah. He's a redhead. Dude, he's yeah, really good. Him. Hey, he Michael Mako is really good. He won Fargo, right? He beat the kid from Mount Vernon. Yeah. The Mount yeah. Vernon kid's going to be really good, dude. And you know what? I really respect Steve because I see him wrestle or I see him coach at uh, like Super 32. He seems like a super involved coach. Yeah. Well, his kid, you know, his kids are doing it. You know, Michael's is, I believe Michael's is all this, but he's got a bunch. I think he has three daughters too. Does he? Yeah. I mean, that guy is, yeah. I, I Steve Mako is actually a really good guy. Yeah. I think yeah. he's really kind of misunderstood because he was just so intense. And I think the kids right. are intense like him. The kid looks like the mom though. Yeah. You he's look good. at the kid in the face, he looks like the mom, but. I, I got nothing respect for you know nothing but respect for yeah, that. Same. Guy. It's like awesome. I'm just glad he never beat me up. But but as I I said, much lower level guys have beaten me up. Dude, Stepe beat me up, but not Did luckily he? not in a fight because he probably could kill me. I almost got beat up one time. I thought I was actually going to get consumed, like eaten. So <laughs> this is this is when I was still like a 41 pounder, so I was more consumable then. Uh, <laughs> I remember I'm working the table at the Cornell body bar and something happens with the clock and the score was wrong. So the ref comes over. I'm like, Hey, this is what happened. So the, he was coaching at Purdue at the time. It was Tom Erickson. Oh, And so I, I told the ref, this is what happened. You said two, but time was already out. So whatever. So his kid lost. And so Erickson's just all over me. And I'm like, I'm working the table, man. Get like, come on. So like, an hour later, I'm getting a break. I'm up in the stands and I see Garland and I sit down with Garland. And I'm like, man, he's like, what's wrong? I was like, freaking, do you see Tom Erickson? I was like, dude almost ate me. And Steve's eyes get real wide and he goes, Shh. and he goes like this. And I look up and it's Tom Erickson and he's just looking down at me and he just shakes his head. I'm like, please don't kill me. <laughs> yeah, he was a dude. He, remember how big he was? He fought in pride. Dude, he knocked Kevin Randleman out. Dude, yeah. He was I a just big saw guy. this like old video of him just knocking Kevin Randleman out and hitting an additional five times. Yeah. Hey, you want to talk about my, you want to talk about the guy? Dude. Randleman? Who's he, who's he Stein, that is him and Bart for Bart, Bart, Bart Chelsevic. It's authenticated. That Ooh. is his actual legit signature in the 92 NCA semis. Gone too soon, man. No. Oh, hey. He died February 11th, 2016. Ferdinand was born in the morning, at three in the morning, 345 in the morning. Right. It was, they, they passed in the night, man. It was crazy. Yeah. 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 And I, so like, that's, he's my guy though. Like if you were like, who's your greatest athlete ever, like Bo Jackson and then Kevin Randleman's right there because he was just incredible. And and I'm a Northwest Ohio guy, Coleman and Kerr, Coleman, Kerr, Randleman, yeah. all Northwest Ohio guys. Yeah. Yeah, been lucky. we've had a lot of awesome guys come out of our state. Yeah, and then it's just it's tough to see them, um, kind of how life goes for them after it. No. Sometimes you know when your your heroes. They were like in an era where like they didn't make that much money, they didn't take care of them, and then like they just kind of cast them aside. I hate that crap. Yeah, I really I'm not a fan of that. You know I'm not a fan of that. I just take care of the people that you know. It's Mark Coleman built the the UFC's built on Mark Coleman. I know. Coleman was their champion for years on end. He won the toughest pride bracket ever. You know, and it's just Mark Coleman probably could have taken his, taken his money and invested it better, you know, because he, you've got to understand, he got a big payout for the pride one. It was like 200 grand then, I believe it was. Yeah. He fought, hey, he fought three fights that night. <laughs> the Grand Prix were bananas. <laughs> And that was the Grand Prix where Kerr was Maybe. The Cerrone fights three times a year and they call him a psycho. They were fighting three times in an afternoon. Dude, three times in an evening, bro. They go out and fight with broken hands. It Talk was, about reckless. Uh, and they were, and I think the lifestyle that and we're seeing. Oh, yeah. Uh, some of these guys are post, 
I mean, the addiction and all that. Yeah, it's sad. Oh, but man, it's, it's, it's sad it. to see your heroes fall like That's that. Not Col- I think Coleman's doing better. He's doing better, but his hip popped out. Know, He's yeah. going to do a celebrity boxing, but it looked like he was on the on the path, you know, and, and he's yeah, so yeah, yeah. So I think the biggest thing for him is being sober and right. some, some kids and he's getting his life back together. And Wes Sims has done a great job. Wes Sims is a great guy. Wes, uh, you know, got Mark into, a, a, I think, a better frame of mind from what I saw when I, yeah. when I yeah. talked to those guys in uh, Steubenville at Schmitty's place. But, you know, you like to see that and, you know, the guy's not drinking anymore and he's. Yeah. Five ancestral tenants, hammer house for life, sober life. Well, I mean, cool. liver, liver king right now. He's liver. He's, he's got a, he's got a bad, he's going to lose his eyesight in the eye. They said liver, the jacked guy. Yeah. Why? He's talking about the answer. He's always about the nine ancestral tenants. That's where I thought you were going with this. Oh, what happened? I don't know what happened. What happened? I mean, it's like it, there's a lot of mystery right now. He's, he showed up with an eye patch. Maybe and he just said that he might lose his eye eyesight. He was in a bad accident. He said, "Oh, okay, got it." Do you know Lang Lang almost lost his eye? Do you know that? Yeah, he was like valeting cars or something, and like a antenna got caught in his eye. It was something crazy like that. But I can't tell his eye. He doesn't have like no. A, he's fine now, but he was fine. he was like supposed to be bad. Well, he was at my house this summer, pushing my kids around and having fun and cutting wood with me out back and yeah, <laughs> hanging out with Jeff Varney. And I like Lang. Lang. <laughs> it sounds like such a Lang hangout. Very lang length, and he stayed for like eight hours one day. He just hung out. It was it was yeah. good. Ah, uh, man, I could talk to you all night, bro. But I got I got to get up early, you know. Right. Get this uploaded to make sure that the people can hear what Charlie has to say about defense soap, West Shore, uh, Saint Edward, Pucci, the big uh, Cornell, Mike Gray, Tom Erickson, Tom Erickson almost ate me, consumed me, dude. Is Tom Erickson? The one, or is that Severn, where him and the Japanese dude are just punching each other in the head? Is that Severn uh, or is that Erickson? It that's Severn. Don, that's Fry. Severn. Don Fry and Sakuraba. Don Fry, Sakuraba, that's what it is. I confuse Don Fry and Severn a lot. <laughs> I mean, they got the big bushy mustaches and they look Gus, so- Gus Seiko has a man crush on Don Fry. He met uh, him and he said that that Don, guy. You ever listen to an interview from Don Fry? I remember like seeing a clip. It was from a long time ago. He's like, I mean, now, I mean, these guys, these fighters now, they might as well be carrying a handbag. I mean, where's our, <laughs> he's like, we don't have a, we don't have a good leader. We need a Putin. Where's our Putin? And this, uh, is like, this wasn't dude, like in the last like, two years. I, I'd fight more fights. I'd fight three fights in an evening. These guys don't fight three fights in three years. Uh, it's, I, can't, I, can't say, I can't say on camera what he said to Gus, but he said a couple uh, things, not like just about, it was just, <laughs> Oh, it was, he's off the it was, he's off the hook totally. Yeah, completely out of pocket. I love it. And how are you going to change that guy? That guy is what that guy is. You don't talk. He is like guy. a mix of like Uncle Sam, Popeye, and <laughs> I don't know what else. Some <laughs> other mythical character. Yeah, exactly. Some other cartoon Chief Wahoo. I don't know. Throw yeah, something out yeah. there. <laughs> so, hey, does Zahid go to Mexico? I think that's where we're at. Probably. I think, I mean, if you're, just, if you're honestly, if you're in his, his position, you look at Meechish, you look at Seabass, you look at Amin, like why, like he's not going to be able to be David. Dude. Think about if Zahid were somehow, cause it, it's crazy because UWW doesn't care about like competitive balance. They yeah. care how many ranking tournaments they go to. Right. They've got these goofy formulas. There's a world where Taylor, and Yazdani, we, we've seen it, have been on the same half. So if Zahid gets on the other half, can he? is there a path to the finals? I'm telling you right now, if that happens, Zahid Valencia, if you don't think he can make the finals, you are puffing glue. Or well, being something. an ethnic chameleon, maybe I just throw on that red, white, and green, take out that eagle in the middle. Have you ever had the eagle in the middle, and I'm Team Mexico? Have they said that to you before? Is that one? That's the one you've been, you've been accused of that? Yes, it was stolen valor. Stolen valor. Stolen valor. <laughs> I knew you like that. I love that so much. Okay. Uh, anything else for me? Anything else you got for me? No, I'm excited for the season. Uh, always a little scary, right? It, it's like you just think about what the next six months is going to be like. But no, it's exciting. Kids are excited. I'm excited. 
I will see you in four weeks at the middle school national duels. Um, who's that? Demilio and, and Demilio. Joe, my guy, Jody the guy, right? Jody, the Bernats, Genoa wrestling, Perrysburg wrestling. They do it. Uh, tell me about Max Seiko. Is Max Seiko going to be competing for national titles? Yeah, he'll be there. Yeah, guy's got him. He's right now. He just has him like living in a cage, and then we're just gonna just open it up right before season starts. So he'll be he'll be like a caged animal. I like not, it. Not really. I like that. I think that's a good thing. Yeah, I think that's a kid who's not gonna fold up shop when things get tough. I think that's a kid who's gonna have legs and he's got an upside to him. Yeah, and I think like I mean he's young. Like so he got beat up when he was younger. He's had a lot of success the last couple by design years. by design. Yeah. He'll have um he's had a lot of success the last couple of years. He probably will again for the next couple of years, but like there'll be bumps in the road. And I think that's to be honest, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, like, like obviously we always set up our kids to fail and wrestle against the best guys and get their butt kicked, and but that's all part of the process. Yeah, absolutely. Charlie Agazino, you got anything else for me? That's it, man. Let's get some rest early day tomorrow and then uh back to work. I love it. Thank you for uh, coming on the Go Cash podcast. Stick around. Okay. Of course. Anytime.